next summer. Yeah, time for that. Yeah. Next June. Schedule me in for that. Yeah. All right. So Annette and I met.
this, but apparently I had pictures, my kids' pictures in my hands, and I told them I was going to die. That's how frightening it was. So we were in an old part of Regents Hospital, and they had a carry monitor because a litter would go through the hallways. It was brought to the emergency room. It took about six hours for them to figure out what happened because the doctor left the clinic. So I was screaming in pain, and nurses were telling me, you gotta wait for, we gotta, you can't have any pain medicine until we get a doctor's order. And I said, I've got peroxide. I was trying to tell them, I've got peroxide in my abdomen. And they actually thought I was a psych patient. So they, nobody knew the story. So finally they got a hold of the doctor who said, this is what I did. And then my surgeon happened to be doing surgery in the hospital, he ran down. And he, they understood, they understood, kind of put it together what happened. So I had an um, emergency laparotomy. GI was in the operating room as well as OBGYN, and I spent three to four hours raising my abdomen out um, and getting that. It was uh, copious amounts of grateful, and it had burned my internal organs. So after that, there was quite a long recovery. I did go back to work, but between 2005 and 2012, I was having more and more problems with um, constipation. So I got to a point where I was taking 10 to 15 new blocks tablets a day to go to the bathroom. So along with that, I didn't know when I was going to, this stuff was going to start working. So I'd have, have to have sits baths because I was so raw and irritated from having so many stools. So it was decided in 2012 that we would, they would do um, a temporary ileostomy on me. Yeah, so everything became dilated and backed up. And this is kind of a portion. What happened was they removed, um, there was a twisted colon there, so they removed that and remove some of the dilated areas. But this is what the dilated area looks like, is that the stool just backs up in there. My, I suspect, and what I've been told, is that the peroxide affected the nerve endings for the functioning of the colon. So I ended up having, uh, opting for a temporary ileostomy, removing the, the twisted part, some of the dilated parts, and then spending some time with that temporary ileostomy to see how I would do. Okay, so here's here's the end ileostomy. This is the loop ileostomy, which is the temporary. So basically, they just have your small intestine and near the junction of the small intestine and the large intestine, they put it in half. Then, when they re, when you're done, kind of with that trial, they sew it back together and drop it in. So that's what I the first thing that I have. And so, you guys know what the difference is between a colostomy and an ileostomy? <laughs> so the ileostomy is um, at the ileum, at, at the uh, small intestine, and basically you have liquid stool. It's at the beginning of digestion where all these enzymes are released to break down the food. So that's all liquid stool that comes out of that. And the colostomy is more towards the end of digestion in the large intestine. Okay, so this is a picture of the, um, the loop ileostomy, the temporary. Now, the, some people will keep these. They'll say, well, you know, I don't want to have another surgery, I'm to keep this. The only problem I had with it is you've got mucus coming out of here, and then you've got solid liquid stool coming out of here. And it's very hard to cut up an appliance around this. So um, that's the only problem with that. Usually people will have it redone and have a permanent ileostomy for them. So I had um, the, um, the temporary ileostomy put back together, dropped in, and it they would give me a trial. So what happened here was when they dropped it in, I ended up with an abdominal wound. My bearing, it didn't, it didn't heal very well. So I had to pack this uh, for a long period of time to resolve that. That's another risk with it, because they do leave 
kind of a, they sow around this <coughs> open hole there, and uh, it, it's supposed to granulate and fill in, but on some patients it doesn't, so we'll look at it and, and dissolve that. I think there's another picture. Okay. Yeah. 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 And it would have been and it was quite deep, actually, so it took some time to... Happy. Yeah. Yeah, it did gradually, but it took many months. Then, so after that, then I continued to have issues, unfortunately. I had the same problems, lots of constipation. We thought maybe it would help to remove that twisted colon and some of the diabetic still had problems with um, using lots of Duplox tablets, running to the bathroom all the time, six baths every day for incontinence. You know, just no way to live. So I decided to opt for a permanent endoscopy. And lots of cramping. I mean, you're on the toilet constantly trying to pass the stool, and I get to the point where I wouldn't eat anymore because it was just too hard to, to get rid of what I ate. So this slide was in between your temporary and your permanent, right, where you were? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so a lot, I already talked about <coughs> that. Um, <but> yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so, th so this is right after, so these are pictures are all of my own surgeries, but this was right after um, I had the permanent ileostomy put in. So if look at that color. What do you think of that color of that stone? Mm -hmm. One of the biggest risks with um, sur surgery for uh, ileostomy or a colostomy is the necrosis of the stoma. So when I was in the hospital and the ostomy nurse came by, by this time I had been a nurse for quite a long time, I said, you know, looks kind of dusky to me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think that's a problem. Oh, no, 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 no. They can get that color, and then it would change colors. It would be dusky, then it would be a little pink, and it would go back and forth. So they're like, well, no, you know, it's it's fine. We we're convinced there's blood flow. So I got sent home, and yeah, so there's the appliance. And then, so you can still see that it's it's pretty dusky. So I got home, and uh, I was home for about a week, and then it turned black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's the infected oh suture. But this one actually, um, this, this has an infected suture, and I had, I had an infectious suture there that I had. But that's also something that can happen. Um, so I had to pack that. Okay, so now, Here's the difference. Now, this is still the dusky one, a little bit pinker in that picture, but still purple most of the time. This is my later surgery where they redid it. You can just see how nice that looks. I mean, that's the way that stoma should look. And there's a lot of sutures around here. You can see right here I have a yeast infection. I had a yeast infection throughout the hospitalization, and we usually advise patients to use this dust in it foot powder basically on there. The only problem is it's kind of a hassle because your appliance won't stick very well when you put this powder on. So, um, and you've got stool coming out of here all the time. So sometimes I would block this with a rag or something and then, you know, lay there and let it, uh, you know, let the air come to this area. But this was a constant problem in the hospital. I don't have it anymore, but I did when I was in the hospital. Have the yeah, there, there's the necrotic one. Yeah. Do you know when you're going to have um, stool infection? Yeah, I can feel it. Yeah. With yeah. how long? Well, depends on what you eat. So <laughs> if if you eat protein, if you eat protein, you you've got delayed, um, you know, it lasts longer as far as the breakdown. But if you eat like carbohydrates, they're running through in 20 or 30 minutes. And then it depends on if you eat like vegetables, you try to chew up. But the biggest problem, and I'm going to get into that with diet, with ileostomy is obstruction. Because you're at the beginning of digestion. So people that try to risk eating peanuts, popcorn, uh, chewing up raw vegetables, you, it hurts. 
to pass that stuff. And you you can you become obstructive. So, but yeah, I can feel it when it's empty, um, and the times vary depending on whether you eat protein or carbohydrates. So, but the, this is the necrotic stoma, and that's what happened at home. So I call the doctor's office and I'd say, you know, color isn't good. Well, you know, we don't have an appointment today for you. We. Um, can't get you in the doctor's out of the office. So I waited another three days. Well, then I get in there, and oh my God, they wanted to take me to surgery right away. Everybody's running around. I go, I told you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> told you there was a problem with this stoma. So what happened, what they did after, when I went in for the emergency surgery, is they tried to save this and burned off all the black necrotic tissue. So they didn't redo it right away, but burned, burned it off, hoping that it would still function. Unfortunately, after that, um, the stoma became hard from them, and scar tissue built up. Do you have a picture of it receded? Yeah, this is what happened. So all this scar tissue built up, it receded, and I spent like a couple months with this trying to um, empty it. So what I had to do to empty that is I had to use a um, Foley catheter and a syringe and suck out the stool. So I did that for quite a while. I kept going in. The doctor would put her, her pinky in there and go, well, it doesn't feel that tight. And I'd say, well, you know, I'm emptying it with a Foley <laughs> catheter. You know, this is interfering with my life. So that went on for quite a while. <coughs> Here's another one of it. It's kind of like a little skin irritation around. Yep, still had some yeast there, which was real problematic in the hospital. What's the little spot by your belly button? That was, a, I think, a suture. They went into, I, I might have been scoped or something, so oh. I think that might I had so many surgeries with all of this. But what happened now with this, you guys, is I ended up in the hospital twice with bowel obstructions, where I was easily obstructing whatever I ate wasn't going through, so I had two small bowel obstructions with that in the months that I had that. Projectile vomiting is really common with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was because your ileostomy is supposed to drain all the time. I know when I'm in trouble because when that bag, you know, you're, you know, even if you're not eating, your ileostomy should drain a little bit, you know. And then it drains a lot when you eat. But when I see that that bag is dry and I start feeling full, I gotta go to the hospital because it's not gonna drain. I mean, I'll try to push, jump up and down. <laughs> You know, do all those things, but I've had probably about eight bowel obstructions through this whole process, and I just had another two in July, even though my stomach <coughs> is working well. Because what the thought is now is that the motility issues have uh, also include the small, small intestines, so I have to be really careful about what I eat. Here's my dog. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little story about her. I have three dogs. I I adopted her when I was sick because when you go through these medical problems, you get depressed. So she was an abused Yorkie in a puppy mill, and somebody kicked her, and all her ribs were shattered on the side, and she lost one of her lungs. So she had had surgery. She was actually in the U of M pet hospital for about a month on a bed. <laughs> So I adopted her, we healed together. I took care of her, she took care of me. So that's the story on her. So yeah, there's again a picture of the BP red um, stoma. So after that, then they decided to do uh, a permanent ileostomy and redo it. They redid it in the same spot. And then this is the end result again. Yeast I had, and that's real common in the hospital. In fact, I'm an infusion nurse, and I was at Regents Hospital and uh, saw a patient there. We were 
trading ileostomy stories. He was an older gentleman. He was, he was, he had his ileostomy was leaking. He said, well, can, can we deal with your teaching in a little while? I go, yeah, for sure, because your old bed will be full if you don't take care of that. But he was raw. I mean, it was flaming red around here. And the problem was, he didn't bring his own appliance to the hospital. He's had an ileostomy for 20 years. He didn't bring his own, he was using their appliance. You know, your skin gets used to your own appliance. So the first thing I do, I got a big bag in the car. The first thing I do when I go to the hospital, I grab, grab a bunch of supplies. A lot of patients forget. And the hospital supplies you can react to. So he was just raw and he didn't have any. So if you have a patient in that situation, Call a family member, ask them who can bring their supplies in as soon as possible. Because oftentimes if they're sick or they've taken by ambulance, they're not going to remember probably to bring their appliances in. But if they have an ileostomy, it's very important to get there. But he was all broken down from using the hospital uh, supplies that he had never used before. So, the, so when I go in the car, I grab underwear. In case I, you know, leap all over the underwear, I usually put underwear in my pocket somewhere and I have a whole bag of supplies in the car. And, and a chain, couple changes of clothes, because sometimes I've been working and I'll, you know, the kiss of death is feeling a warm uh, stool on your skin. When I feel that, I'm like, oh, I got a leak. <laughs> so I, I literally have laid the seat down and I'm changing the bag in the car in between cases that I'm going to. So it doesn't happen that often anymore, but it does happen and you never know when it's going to happen. It, it's a mess. Uh, one night I ate some squash the night before and I don't know what happened, but I, the bag came loose. And I had squash. <laughs> all the way to the bathroom, everywhere. The bed was full of it. You know, you just don't realize. I mean, it comes out so fast. So it's a real mess when that happens. It's unlike a colostomy where, you know, it's a little easier to deal with that liquid stool just runs all over the place. So, okay, next. So what I want to show here, you guys, with these next slides is there's a whole healing process. This, the beefy red one is the first one. It, it um, sort of sloughs off this um, covering and it changes. So you want to go to the, yeah, that's, and it, it's really swollen after surgery. It won't look like this after, you know, you heal, but it's very, very swollen. There's that suture, infected suture. Now this is after I got home. Look at that. Look at the sloughing. So when you're working with patients in the hospital, I'm going to talk about this now because it's so important. When you have a patient with a new ileostomy, they can be young, older, and not coping. You've got to watch for that. Because if because these patients will come into the ER to get their ileostomy changed because they don't want to deal with it. So you got to watch for that. And you need to get them hands on with this. If they're not like still under anesthesia and you're going to go in and help them, have them cut the hole out of the wafer and get them doing it. I mean, just have them do it. And even if they, you know, mess up something, open up another package for them, have them clean that off themselves. But right away after surgery, get them started and doing that on their own. I, too many nurses just do the whole thing and are forgetting that the patient needs to, to learn how to take care of that. Because look at all this. When they get home, they got to take proper care of that or that's going to get all infected and uh, there's going to be issues with the healing. So you got to get them on board really fast. And if you feel like they're not wanting to do it or they're refusing or they're grasping, then you got to talk to the doctor and get some psych help or some support uh, person. In fact, what I'm looking at probably doing is eventually going to the hospital and visiting certain patients to, to help them a little bit with that. Yeah? Uh, when you shower, do you shower with that on or off? Can you shower uh, you with don't off? shower with it off because you're going to be all full of stool. All right. So what I do is I leave it I leave it on and then I change it afterwards. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
and it's it's tricky because um, if I take a bath and pull that off, I gotta have a towel or a paper towel because I've been full of stool before I even get out of the tub. Yeah. I'm sorry again. My stepfather has one, but he since I've been little, but he would never talk to me about it. So oh, I okay. Like, yeah, I just know like what he has had to deal with. Yeah. Um, and so one more question, like if you are in a public place and and uh, empty and rinse, I don't know how. <clears throat> like what? What's the process for that? Well, what the process is is I've got a. I've got like a, that's a very good question. I have what you call a high output bag. These high output bags are really helpful for bilioostomies. These are more like colostomy bags. Um, you know, they open up wide on the bottom. But I always suggest to patients when you have an ileostomy, this is just perfect because you just let that go. And so what I do is when I sit, say I'm in a restaurant and I can, and patients who've had an ileostomy, they can feel when that bag is filling up because it gets swollen here. You know, you know. Well, and, they're all, and you're always putting your hand there. I mean, I always, you know, I'm checking it constantly because you don't want it to get too full because then this wafer's gonna break away. So I empty my ileostomy probably 15 to 20 times a day. And what I'll do is I go into the bathroom, I sit down, this drops right down between my legs, open the, you know, the plug, drain it, close it up, stick it back in. So you don't have to rinse it? You don't rinse no, it. you don't rinse the bag. Oh. No. Now, one thing that I do do, you know, ileostomy drainage, you guys, smells horrible. 